It's the Archivist, y'all. Exclusively interviewing X Me. Yes, sir. And who is the man behind the controller with the mirror's edge, X Me? The man behind the controllers with, with the mirror's edge. That kid, that would be me, Donovan Johnson, a kid from Wichita, Kansas. You know, just had a real big dream of making it in the music industry and had a dream of. You know, even past the music industry, just making it with what I wanted to do when I was ever since I was a kid. You know, I call them astronaut dreams. It's like you know they ask you when you're in third grade what you want to be when you grow up, and I said I wanted to be a musician from that day forward. I've you know made the steps of being here, and now I'm here and doing interviews with the archivist. It's trying to be awesome. You know and I mean? on to starting your career at 15. Share about your inspirations to get where you're. My biggest inspiration would probably be Jay Z. Andre 3000, Outkast as a collective group, Rivers Cuomo, Weezer. Those, those three people have have inspired me lyrically about being myself, and just inspired like what I do, basically with my career as far as like giving the people something different, giving the people something that's not the norm, you know. And those three artists have all done that with their careers, whether it be Jay Z, who's taken the hustler route and has, who's went from talk about bricks and keys and all that with Rockefeller Records to being, you know, head in Def Jam as a president to now he's like, you know, Forbes, you know, 100 and all that. Like you would never think that dude from Marcy Projects would get there. And that's that's what I, I represent with where I'm from, from Wichita, Kansas. And same with Andre 2000 and Rivers Cuomo who have both inspired me lyrically and like a lot of the topics I talk about aren't regular topics in hip hop. And those two artists have done that with their careers and with their genres of music. I rock with those two inspirations though. Those two people have really made me, you know, who I am as far as, you know, music. You know what I mean? And doing more than 12 mixtapes. Tell yeah. us about some of your favorite moments working with Michael Seven Summers and the creation behind your lyrics. Some of my, my I, I would say my favorite project that I worked on with Seven would be Everybody's Nobody. Because that project, we built that for like almost an entire year. And we had just started getting a lot of internet buzz. We were young, we were energetic, we were excited about what was going on. And and me and him, we like every record on there, we made together, like as a collective, you know, um, Fall Out the Sky. That record, I was over his house and he had an NPC set up and I pressed one of the buttons and he started playing a sample. And I was like, yo, what is this? And he's like, oh, that's a sample I chopped up. He's like, you like that? I was like, this is crazy. I kept playing, I kept playing, I kept playing it. I was like, dude, you have to make this right now. And he made it, the beat right there in front of me, like, we got a new stream and let people see it and all that. And we made that record right then and there. And I think Everybody's Nobody actually dropped like a week after that. Because, so that was like the last record we made. And, and I wrote the song in four hours. And we, me and him, we just were friends. So it's like any artist and rap group that works together. I mean, any artist and producer that works together. If they have a, you know, connection just personally, the music's nothing. You know what I mean? And I, I've seen it with some of the greatest, you know, hip hop acts. You know, they, they're friends behind the scenes, and that's my boy. So it's like when we go in, we make a record. It's just love, and we just like. We both have the same kind of concepts and ideas, and he, he pulled out some crazy samples, and, and you're going to hear a lot of crazy stuff on the album with me and Seven. For sure, and receiving two awards for your mixtapes from DJ Booth. Tell us about the accomplishment. That was crazy, because DJ Booth was one of the first people who supported me as an artist, who supported me on blogs and all that, and shouts out to DJ Z and Nate. All the, everybody over there has been like mad like supportive of my movement so for me to get that that was just that's just crazy because I'm not you know even now it's still humbling to know that people even know who I am you know what I mean I'm from Wichita Kansas I'm just a I just put some music on the internet and people found it so like that's love you know what I mean so shout out to DJ Boo for that and people talk about squares tell us the perfect square and what finds it perfect square is someone who can be great at anything that's why I, like, I always remember the scene from Revenge of the Nerds where she says, are, are all nerds as good as you? And he says, yes. And I took it from there and said, yes, because all nerds do everything they do the best. And it's true because like, if you're a nerd, you 
try to be, you know, you try to accomplish anything you set your mind to. And a perfect square is just somebody who he doesn't try to conform. And that's why I'm the square in the circle because I, I, I'm the dude that's in the circle and you know, I might have the fresh kicks on, I might have the fresh gear and I do, I might get, get the girl that you're trying to get. But at the same time, I didn't do anything that y'all are doing to be in this crowd. I did, I just was me. And I didn't care about what was cool. I didn't, even if my kicks are fresh, I don't care that they're the new hot kicks because I just got them because they look cool. You know what I mean? So the perfect square is just somebody who, who doesn't conform because you can't change that square. You know what I mean? Like you can't change that. It's, it's got to stay right there. You know what I mean? And you can't conform to what everybody else is doing. You know what I mean? So. And many highlights from Planet Squaria and the Square in the Circle, 40 Days and 40 Nights. Elaborate more on the process for your success and recording over 80 songs. Well, the very first project, Square in the Circle, actually the concept came from my, shout out to one of my fans for getting me this. I get all these wristbands from fans. This right here, Mass Effect 2. Mass Effect 1 was actually the video game that inspired that inspired the project Square in the Circle. Basically, I was just playing a lot of a lot of fucking video games, and I was like, I want to make a mixtape based on this video game. I want to make a mixtape where I'm like another guy from another planet and all this other stuff. And 40 days, 40 nights. That process that took about two months recording 80 songs, and I, none of those songs are old. Like I recorded and wrote every one of those songs for, for two months straight. I grew my hair out. I didn't cut my hair, and. And we just kept going. We just kept working. I got some pretty cool beats. I worked with a lot of dope artists. I worked with Esso. I worked with Johnny Goins. I worked with Mickey Fax. I worked with a lot of a lot of dope artists while making it. And you know, we got a crazy project out of that. And it, it was at a time in my career where a lot of people weren't were just now finding out about me. And when they were just now finding out about me, I wanted them to hear as much music as possible from me. So we got 40 days, 40 nights. I, I've actually contemplated doing a part two. I've actually thought about it. Don't quote me on it. Like, don't don't think I'm going to do it. But I've thought about it. You know what I mean? If if, if things are right and, and it's not oversaturation, I would do it again. Because it was a, it was a great project. And your favorite video games, superheroes, movies, okay. TV shows, and comic books, and anything else you collect. And can you share with us? All right. My favorite video game of all time is Final Fantasy VII. The greatest video game of all time. It's like, you can't top that. And Final Fantasy X is the second best Final Fantasy game. But Final Fantasy VII is by far the best video game ever created. I also rock with um, Mass Effect, of course, and Gears of War. Those are my top three. Favorite comic book is The Punisher. I'm a really big. I'm really big on anti-heroes. I like Punisher. I love Garth Ennis, the um, comic book writer. He's like one of the most graphic and dopest adult like you know comic book artists. And superhero. Let's see. Like, I say the Punisher and Batman. Those are my two favorite. My favorite movie is The Dark Knight. Not only because it's a dope, because it's a comic book. It's also because that movie is well written, amazingly shot, and I'm a huge Christopher Nolan fan. Memento. One of the greatest films ever. Favorite TV shows? The Office, Dexter, South Park, South Park, Dexter, The Office, and Sopranos. Those are my TV shows I can't live without. And anything else you collect? I'm a huge collector of, let's see, I, I, I collect so many things. I'm a huge collector of DVDs. I have like over 2,100 DVDs. Huge collector of porn. I love porn. I don't collect like DVDs of porn because I just feel like that's creepy and weird. But I have like a hard drive. It's called Megatron, like Megatron, and Megatron is like three terabytes of just awesome porn. I'm, I'm a really, I'm really big on organizing, it too. so I'm really serious about that. I know what it's like to organize because I'm the archivist. Ah, uh, exactly, exactly. I also am a huge collector of uh, basketball cards. I've been collecting basketball cards since I was like six years old. What's and the most expensive? You have? The most expensive is a Jordan rookie card. That's my, that's like, that's my joint. But I'm trying to get the Jordan. I don't know if there's a card for it, but the one time Jordan was a number 12. Did you know that? No. He, he wore number 12. One time his, his, somebody stole his, his jersey from his locker room, and he had to wear number 12. And there's a card for it. That's, I'm trying to get that one. That's, that's, that's the one I'm after. I don't even want to have it for money. I just want to have it because I'm a huge Jordan fan. Other than that, toys. I, I collect all the Final Fantasy VII toys. I collect all the Watchmen. 
all the I have almost all, all the Batman old school toys, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle toys, all those. I, I just want to have some, I, I want to have mad stuff so that, like I can pass them to my family. You know what I mean? It's like keep that that's how, that's how you stay alive when you're gone. You have you know mementos. Hip hop collecting toys. Exactly. I I, I rock with. I got I got the biggie one. I got the biggie one. I got an Easy E one, and I got a Run DMC. One. So those are the only three I have. You got the Eminem figure. You got the Eminem one. Slim Shady. That's crazy. How, when did that come out? Back. Like, A while back, right? Five or ten. That's five, crazy. Five years ago. And That's there's crazy. a Tupac. There's. I I've, I've never found a Tupac one. I have an MC version. Hammer one. I have a whole I have an old school MC Hammer one, and um, a Michael Jackson one. But I don't have any other I got Snoop figures. too. Really? And I got a Mac Dre bobblehead. Do you have a? Uh, I, 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 I've seen the Mac Dre bobblehead. Have you ever seen the? I want a Snoop one like that one in the video. Remember that one? The one that had like the the Jack blue. Suit. Yeah, I want that yeah. one. I want that one. OG. That's the one I'm after. The OG Snoop. I also collect Lowrider Hot Wheels. Oh word! And I got the. When, when, when did you start doing that? I've been doing that yeah. since like '98. Crazy. So I got a large oh, collection. Yeah, that, boxes of cars. There, there's, a, there's a um a dude named Tony Dawson. He collects those. Also, he's a mastering engineer. He mastered Reasonable Doubt. He mastered all the Rockefeller albums. He he has all decorated his office. That's. I wish I could collect cars. I just never been into vehicles for some reason. And street customs too. Wow, which that's are like crazy. All the low, low riders. And you make them yourself? Big case I bought off eBay. You know what I'm saying? It's all locked up, and I yeah. even got a certificate of authentication Woo! on that. That's yeah. crazy. That's crazy. I, I, the, my, my best collection is I have The Office. I have one of this, my favorite episode, the script autographed by everybody, Steve Carell, everybody that's on the show, you know. And that, that's my favorite. I have a certificate of authenticity with, with it and everything. And a wall of famous celebrities, too. I have Word. All the people I've met with all the custom autographs. Oh, yeah. You're the archivist, of course. Yeah, man. Of course. Just sharing my collection with you. I, 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 I rock with it. I rock with it. No. That's what's up. No, I mean, Gaining fame on everybody's nobody, yeah. featuring Big Sean, Wiz Khalifa, and Neo. Yeah. Colin Monroe, tell us more on this. That was my that was my biggest and my favorite mixtape I ever dropped because it was perfect timing. I worked with artists that are now all like successful artists. You know, Wiz, Sean, Neo, Colin Monroe, like all these artists. They're not only friends of mine, but they're successful artists now, and it's dope because we're all coming up together. I just love it because. The lead song, Everybody's Nobody, stand, says everything that I stand for now. You know, we're in the me generation, you know, the me, me generation. So everything is about follow me, Tumblr me, Twitter me, Facebook me, you know, and Everybody's Nobody just kind of humbled it down. Like, everybody's nobody. You know, I could be somebody, but, you know, in the end, everybody's nobody. You know what I mean? And Busy Zone working with DJ Ill Will yeah. and doing another. 30,000 downloads working with the alumni. How yes. did this Mizzy Zone, that one took like, like, like a year process, you know. And, and I'll say on record right now that that's my only project that I'm not a big fan of. That's the only project that I was like, I felt like timing was wrong. I was on the road all the time, so I didn't get to record like I wanted to. And and I made up for that when I came back around and made Zero Heroes because I got to go home and work and write and work on my album and everything was, you know, I was in my own, I, I was in the real business zone at that time, you know what I mean? But I messed with the project because when you listen to it, you can tell I'm on the road a lot, I was going through a lot of stuff with family and, and having a son and all that. So every tape is evolution of XP. And Zero Heroes, a large hit for you, yeah. 120,000 downloads. Yeah. Best mixtape of the year featuring Kendrick Lamar Vado, production with Just Blaze, Omen, Swift D, awesome sound. Congrats on being in the superstar position. Yo, thank you. We're almost there. You know, I, I, I've got a lot of ears from that project. I, I actually was in XXL show approved last month because of the project, and, and I'm on this tour right now because of that project. So, so it's all love. That's my my biggest and lyrically favorite project I've ever had, next to my album, which nobody's heard yet. But you, some of those records on Zero Heroes were on my album, so you can see where we take it. And the kid with the green backpack being yeah. signed to Warner Brothers, tell yeah. us of the success and what else is coming out and how the tour has been. Basically, the tour has been awesome. Like, I signed to Warner Brothers, dang, it might be a year ago this week, I signed to Warner Brothers. And from that point on, I've just been making records. I've worked with 
amazing producers for the project and even more than anything like I, like I said earlier Jay Z is one of my biggest influences so I'm in the studio with his producer Just Blaze making this album so it's just it's overwhelming it's, re it's really humbling to be able to be in the position I'm in right now to make the music I'm getting to make and, and it's cool because like I'm just I'm just continuing doing me it's like nobody's forcing me to make this kind of record nobody's forcing me to talk about this kind of stuff I'm just doing me and people are going with it and people are appreciating it and supporting it so the tour is awesome because I get to go out there and see the fans that support me and it's my first time in Dance City so it's like I'm about to show out and your album Yes, and, and the album, the album we're working on after I finish this tour, I'm going right back in the studio with Justin and getting back on the on the project. I'm hoping I would love to drop it in February 2012. You can expect, yeah. You can expect pure awesomeness. You can expect it's all a concept album. So when you hear it, you're gonna hear a story about me going from the kid that nobody knew, the kid that kind of just meshed in with everybody else, and throughout the whole album, I just stand out more and more to the end. I'm here and I've arrived and by the end of that album I hope that everybody you know tunes in and realizes what I plan to do in the, in the, with my music career and in the music game so and one more thing when it comes to high school and all these bullies yeah. what can you say to these motherfuckers you know, when they put them down and especially in the rap game with when you came exactly up? exactly like I actually caught a charge for a fight with the bully when I was younger and I ended up having to go to the Boys and Girls Club for the rest of my school year because of a bully. And I see it's getting crazier and crazier now that, you know, we have Facebook, you have Twitter, you have so many different ways to, you know, come at people and talk down on people. But the thing is, it's like the whole square and movement, everything I stand for with being in the square, embrace who you are. They can call you whatever they want to call you. They can throw, you know, sticks and stones at you. But you know what? Pick those up and build a house with it. You know what I mean? Don't let anything break you down. Let, let the things that people throw at you make you. Because in the end, it's your life. You know what I mean? It's like you, you have to look yourself in the mirror. They don't. You know what I mean? They, they're probably obviously dealing with their own issues. So all I stand for is positivity and making sure that Whatever, you know, somebody throws at me negative or positive, I build from it. And that's how I got here now. And the biggest crowd you've ever rocked? The biggest crowd I ever rocked was probably, I'll say with Kid Cudi. I, I toured with Kid Cudi last year. And we did, I believe it was MSU, was probably the biggest crowd, like 5,000 kids. So that's my own show. I've done Lollapalooza as well. And that was like madness in Chicago. And that was a chitty night. So like, I'm looking forward to just that expanding, expanding, because you know, the project's gonna be arena. It's gonna be arena music. So, arena rap, here we go. And the best hip hop memory you've been part of or contributed to? Let me see, let me think about this. The best hip hop memory I've been a part of or contributed to. Let me see, let me think. I work with like, so many dope artists now. Awesome. Come here real quick, I got a question to ask. Here's my DJ, he's always on the road with me. The question is, what is the dopest hip hop memory that I've either been a part of or contributed to? Do you think, what would you say like, we like, I mean, because we've done like so many, shows and with so many people. I'm trying to think of like I'm trying to think we've been we we work with people when they let me think. The best hip hop moment we've had. Yeah 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 because we've toured with so many people like past hip hop like Mike Posner and Far East movement and, and artists like that. Like, who, who was something that was, cause I know like, like, but as I was saying, that, yeah, that, that's that's one dope thing, like when we were on the Mike Posner tour, Far East Movement was fly like a G6 was blowing up, so like I got to actually see a hit record happening with friends of mine, you know what I mean, and that was really crazy, cause it was like, I was watching as they climbed the charts. I, I was there when 50 Cent jumped on the remix. I was there the day that they went number one. I was there when their album dropped and they got the numbers back. I was there for all that with them because we, we shared a tour bus with them and we like, that's those are my boys. So like, that, that's, that's, what, that's what I was thinking of, like that moment. But, um, another crazy moment was 
being in the studio with just just plays him playing me like exclusive records that he's had. You never realize that our, the artists that we look up to, the artists that we came up with, are just rappers like us. You know what I mean? When I got to work with them, I'm telling you, Just Blaze, one day I'm gonna steal that damn laptop. Because he has some jewels on there. So like, you you watch out for me, all right? But nah, he, he's, a, he's so dope because it's like, I'm sharing stories with my favorite producer of all time, next to Kanye West. And that's, it's insane, you know what I mean? So it, it's kind of crazy. I won't say the records I've heard, I just heard some really dope records. So those two things, working like being on Troy Farley's movement, working with Just Blaze on the awesome series. What inspires you? What inspires me? I would say my family more than anything. My family like have, have always instilled in me the fact that like, Go after what you what you dream, and, and even like there, there's been doubt. Like like my mom, she wanted me to go to college. You know, she was like, right when I graduated, she gave me an ultimatum after high school of either going to college or moving out. And I decided to move out, and she she didn't believe that. She didn't, she didn't trust in that. So when it happened, she was mad at me. You know, she was like, you you're taking a risk and you're doing this and like you don't want to go to college and it would all parents do. It would all parents do. In, in, in actuality, I said, I wasn't going to college because I just, I didn't want to go to school. I didn't want to go to college because college didn't do anything for my music career. You know what I mean? I, I, there was no instance, there was no classes that were going to help me further myself as a musician. So I said, what I'm going to do is go to Barnes & Noble, I'm going to read a lot of books and I'm going to find out what I need to do to grow up in this game. And you have anything to say to them? Yo, I'm glad to be here. This is my very first time here. And I'm kind of upset because my boy Josh Pease, they couldn't get in, you know, for this last show. This is the last show of me and Casey's tour. So it's going to be an epic moment. It's going to be a good time. Free Josh Pease, man. Canada. Free Josh, yeah, free Josh Pease. <laughs> and you got any shouts? Yo, shouts out to all the Squareans. Shouts out to the zone.tumblr. I mean, shouts out to the Squareans on Twitter. Make sure y'all follow them. That's the official like fan site. Kid with the green backpack coming soon. If you don't know about me, this is your first time ever hearing about X to be on Archivist. Yo, y'all make sure y'all follow me on Twitter, X to the V, Facebook.com slash X to the V, YouTube.com slash X to the V, everything.com slash X to the V. Shouts to Nardwar, the yeah. big man that Nardwar, with us. Yes, sir. Got Dara That's and Fortune Sound Club. Yo. And this is the Archivist, and you already know the name, y'all. Yeah, I already know. This